Hi there. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing. I quit drinking coffee, so I'm a little bit more hmm. today. But uh, let's let's do a question I've been asked, I mean, countless times over the past couple of weeks. Uh, let's talk about the size of the pigment particles that you're using and how it affects you. All right. All right, now that that's over with. Pigment particle size, yeah. So, we start getting into um, color, black, you know, any type of stuff that we're implementing into tattooing that we're injecting into the skin, the size of the particles is gonna be really important when we think about uh, not only the saturation of the colors that we're putting into the skin or man manipulating light, but also the possible health consequences that they can have on the individual, right? Um, so let's first talk about saturation. Um, when you think about pigment, we think about it just as this color, right? Like we just see a bottle and, uh, you know, it says blue on it or something. And, and we're just like happy about it. Yay, we can, we can take that, we can put it in an ink cap, and we take that ink cap and we put it into skin, right? We make happy people. And that's, that's fine, but when we start actually taking that bottle of pigment and we blow it up, and we actually see, I gotta get off that chisel tip there. What we see with our bottle of pigment when we blow it up, Boop. The pigment that's in there is just an aggregation of a whole bunch of little particles that interact with energy, reflect, ref, reflect, refract light, that end up outputting what our eyes see, right? Boop, 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 as blue. And the concentration of how many particles of pigments that are in there, right, is gonna de determine exactly how lustrous that is. That's when we get into washes and stuff, right? And we have 100% of those pigment particles that are in the bottle, and there's no other carrier fluid whatsoever, then we just end up with this, like, ground up sandy mixture that doesn't do anything, right? We can't just like take sand and tattoo it into people effectively because you need something there that's gonna be able to carry the particles of pigment in a dispersed state into that, that substrate that you're trying to put it into. That's where we have a carrier fluid, right? All of this other stuff that's around it, right? Which would be water, you know, biocidal agents, performance enhancers and some of their, uh, the brands that are out there, that stuff is all your, your carrier pigment, right? Or your carrier fluid for the pigment, sorry. <clears throat> so when you start evening, uh, I mean, when you start balancing these things out, right, when you have like a sliding scale of 100% pigment to 0% carrier fluid, you end up with something that's very dry. And when you end up with something that is 95% carrier fluid and only 10% pigment, you have one, a solution that still may look relatively bold when you have it in a bottle, you know, but when you actually look at it under a microscope, there isn't a whole lot of particles of pigment in there. They start to decrease based on that concentration. Now, there's a trick that you can do to fit more particles of pigment into that bottle, right? And we gotta think about just how big that those particles are. If we have a container that is filled with, you know, whatever, uh, they're one millimeter in, in, in diameter across, <laughs> right? One millimeter. Um, you can't fit very many of those particles of pigment into that bottle, right? They can maybe fit three in there. Now you have to think about all the space that's gonna be around in between that. That hasn't been filled. That's, that ends up having a lot of solution, of that carrier fluid, with not very many particles of pigment. So, in essence, when you're trying to put it in there, you're gonna end up with less ability to saturate the area, right? Because you're gonna be pushing just like larger, chunkier things in. And then when they start to align inside the body and pack up, you're gonna have a lot of space between them, right? All those spaces between them, when you start thinking about things overlapping, laying on top of each other, whatever, that's gonna create space where energy can travel past through or even get caught in and around, and it's gonna decrease the ability of light to interact with those particles, get back out, and you can see it as making it a little bit dimmer, right? It's not as vibrant. So when we start trying to make extremely vivid pigments, that's some good squeakers, what we wanna do is we wanna to try to make the particles as small as possible right so we can fit more in there and when we start fitting smaller bits together 
of particles, the distance between each one of them decreases, right? So we're actually able to stick more of something inside of something, displacing the amount of total carrier fluid that's in there. So there's a very delicate balance that's gonna go on for performance, like how fast and easy it is gonna be getting it into the skin, right? And this also is going to create a space where <clears throat> less energy is going to be able to get th through this, right? It's going to have to interact with these particles rather than being able to find a space to go, go through it. So it's going to make things just appear brighter. And when you have more things stuck closer together, you're going to end up with greater saturation. And that's just going to make things look better, right? And there's a bad thing about this though. When the particle sizes start getting so small that we can define them almost as like nanoparticle dispersions of that pigment, you're going to have maximum ability of being able to interact that light. There's going to be very little chance of any type of energy to pass through that without interacting with it, which is going to make your tattoos seem super vibrant, which is what we see nowadays with a lot of the pigments that uh, are released commercially. The bad thing about it is the smaller that these particles get, the more likely that they are to migrate and move through the skin. So when we start talking about actually, oh, I always forget that red sucks. Um, when we start talking about health consequences or even longevity, the smaller that the particles are, the more likely that they are to migrate. And because they're becoming, uh, they're coming into contact more often with the actual energy that's abundant and available, like light energy, the rate in which they break down also increases, right? So we have a whole bunch of very, very, very small particles of pigment. Let's do our skin model here are suspended kind of well inside the, the skin here. Let's see the larger ones that we're doing. The ability of the body to actually like use the internal structures that, you know, add elasticity and structure, blah, 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 whatever to the skin, are, are able to keep that stuff in place more effectively. So what happens is as you age, there's gonna be less of a propensity for these things to move because the body's holding them better and there's not as much competition for those little pieces of pigment to kind of smush out, you know? If we flip that and we have a whole bunch of very small things all launched now, I'm not using that red again, I'm gonna put that back. We have a whole bunch of very, very, very small particles of pigment that are taking up an area. It's gonna be easier for them to move and migrate when the skin thins because there's less obstruction based on the actual just structure of the skin, right? They're able to bend and freely move more. And since they're aggregated closer together as well, as they break down, they're gonna look like they fade a lot more quickly, right? And the worst case with this stuff though, when you start getting the particles of pigment that are really, really, really small, they end up drifting quite a bit throughout the skin. And they actually end up being resorbed into the body. Now you can see this a lot with like white TiO2, right? The nanoparticle dispersions of TiO2. It's really good at uh, tinting and making those like digital color spectrums that we have in our tattoo pigments available right now. Like making things look wild, right? And you have so many very like colors and variables of like, oh, whatever. I said, keep, keep seeing variables on the other whiteboard here, sorry. Um, and so what, what happens is like, you have a whole bunch of white. We have a video about this. I'll put a link up there. Um, I have a whole bunch of white and a little bit of uh, pigment there and the white acts as an amplifier and it shines so much light, but when you start losing it more and more and more and you don't have a whole bunch of that other pigment there, it just gets really weak and you can't see it because there's just not a lot there. It's like using a wash, right? Um, the other thing is, is like, if these particles get so small, this is, I mean, even past just like falling through the structures of the skin, they can get so small that they can actually get into the nucleus of a cell. I'll just make some things there. Well, this is some OCD stuff here, anyways. Um, if we have a part particle of pigment that is so small, it can bypass the actual structures of the cell, enter into the nucleus, and it can induce apoptosis, cell death, right? The cell will just fucking liquefy out. And, uh, there's a theory that's being tested right now that this is actually one of the reasons why we see a lot of the um, sensitivities or like color allergies that we see in tattooing is that the actual 
products that are being used can move into the cell and they modulate how the machinery inside the cell works and the body starts to freak out, right? Like with red reactions, so you get liquefi liquefaction. It would make a lot of sense to think that maybe one of those particles of red has gotten into a nucleus of a cell and it keeps falling down into further and further cells and the body reacts and overreacts and it just starts to annihilate all the cells in the area, right? Creating a catastrophe that is extremely painful and sometimes requires excision to get rid of. So what's the point of all of this discussion today? Well, I think that we need to have a talk just in general about this because there has to be a balance between particle size uh, for quality of color as well as the safety of the people who are getting the tattoo, right? So the initial result of a tattoo, if you have very small stuff, we'll say small particles, Whoop. You're going to have a really vibrant, vibrant, short lived tattoo, which is awesome, right? Like realism guys love this stuff. I mean, so you get to get a touch up every two years. It's, that's fine, right? On well, the negative side, we're going to have more migration, um, migration into body. And when this happens, we don't have any real data yet. I mean, it's, it's, it's really unethical to do a test where you may kind of like hurt someone intentionally to try and figure out what's going on with this. It's like, that's Nazi level stuff. So we're not gonna be seeing this uh, in practice in the world, uh, but we may have detailed results of this stuff over the next 30 to 40 years with a large population of people who've gotten tattooed, so maybe succumbing to specific health ailments because of it. If they don't, maybe we can make the assumption that things are safe, which is not good science, but people will probably do that. Uh, it's just better to say, like, we have not seen results come back yet. Right? We're returning a null result, not a not not result. Uh, anyways. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cut that bit out. <clears throat> For larger particles, We're going to have less vibrant, longer lasting uh, tattoos. Oop, zoop, boop. I forgot how to spell there. Um, and we're going to have less migration. What does this mean? So, this means, yeah, this stuff is probably or could possibly be safer. Um, using the hypotheticals that we're dealing with right now, but you're going to end up with tattoos that just don't feel as amazing artistically. But the small particle stuff, you can make things that are absolutely insane. So there's going to have to be a discussion, I think, with people as to what they feel is appropriate. And it should not just include the artists, it should also include science, and it should include clientele. And then, then we tell the politicians what to do. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a politics guy, I don't give a shit. Anyways, uh, that's kind of a crash course on this. We'll get more into lattice structures and uh, amine rings and line interaction and other stuff later, a more advanced thing, but that's that. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, just hit us in the bottom uh, bit there. Send us an email, uh, bettertattooing at gmail.com. Um, respond to the show, go buy a hat, do something. I don't know. We love all you guys. Thanks for watching. I know I'm tired. I apologize, but we'll, uh, we'll make another couple videos soon. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off. Oh, oh, oh.